So welcome everyone to this panel talk on depression. My name is Scott Walker and I'm with a group of friends. We all met at a course earlier this year. It was in January in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it was facilitated by Andy Shaw, who's a really amazing gentleman. Andy Shaw has created incredible mindset books, audios, videos. He has an online community and he does the odd course. And Andy is someone that in the midst of going bankrupt, he was able to change his mindset and actually go through that incredibly difficult time with ease. And what he decided to do was to create materials to help others go through challenging times with ease and more importantly, live day-to-day -day life with more ease and grace and creating their dream life. So yeah, I'm really grateful for all these guys being here. They're, I'm actually the only Canadian. They're all, uh, they're all in the US, in different parts of the US. And um, they've all thankfully agreed to be on this call with me here live, which I really appreciate. And we're, we're going to do a panel talk on depression here. So um, it's going to be open, and I'm just going to change it to gallery view here, kind of Brady Bunch. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just curious if anyone would like to share um, what's, what's a challenging time in your life that, that you can remember and what was a turning point for you? And might be a little tricky. Um, you know, I, I can even share. So I'll, I'll share to get started. Um, I was living in Japan and I had just been diagnosed with the bipolar disorder. I was living in an apartment that was like a family size apartment. So everyone else in this apartment building was a family, like mom, dad, two, three, four kids, whatever. And then there's me, I'm in this family apartment by myself. So it was like city housing and I was a city employee teaching English. And um, the way bipolar disorder works, normally someone has a manic episode and it's almost guaranteed that come down and we'll have a depressive episode. So when I had this manic episode, I was in New Zealand and then when I got back to Japan, not only was I dealing with coming off this wave of mania, but I was away from family again, et cetera. So when I was in Japan, my apartment was an absolute mess. And I remember there's this knock on the door and that person knew I was home. So you could see the lights on and uh, there's this knock and there's my, there's a friend of mine. She's like, Scott, I know you're home. So she's knocking. I'm like, oh, maybe I can just pretend I'm not here, you know? So I really wasn't feeling like seeing anybody. And uh, so I opened the door and I was kind of like standing really close to this person. So, so they couldn't see my place. Um, so I was really embarrassed. My place is really, really messy. So this person came in and, uh, and they said, hey, uh, I know you're having a really hard time and I know you're most likely feeling down. And, uh, and yeah, she didn't judge me at all. And she gave me a big hug and uh, then she took me out uh, and we had a coffee and she got me out of my place because I know when I was in that depressed state, I was barely leaving my place, basically just go to work and come home. So, um, yeah, so I guess the turning point for me was after the coffee with her, I got home and, you know, I just, I remember I just set a timer for five minutes and I cleaned one small area. And I told myself, okay, just start with that small area, clean that, don't, foc don't focus on the whole mess. And, you know, sure enough, I, after that five minutes expired, I, I did a little more and a little more. And then, you know, I went to sleep and then the next day I did a little bit more. And, you know, in the span of a few days or so, I was back to a more normal living space. And because of that, I, my mood started to lift. So so that's an example from my life when I was in a very depressed state. And uh, yeah, would anyone else like to share about something that happened in their life or a turning point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I guess I had a similar situation, but over a much longer period of time. I, um, I used to live in a warehouse where I had my business running also. And um, I'd been living there for quite a number of years, and I didn't realize it, but I had kind of gotten into a, a hermit lifestyle. Um, I won't say I was depressed, but it, I was just 
feeling happier when I wasn't around a lot of people. And so just, I guess, feeling socially um, awkward and having to push myself to go out and meet with people and, and, and be in groups occasionally. Um, and this had evolved for a long time, but then um, an incident happened where there was a, a fire that happened in my place. And fortunately, I was able to put the fire out and uh, wasn't, wasn't too badly injured. But it, it kind of caused a cascading of events. And this events um, included my landlord being unhappy with me and, and me moving out of the warehouse. And uh, my girlfriend at the time um, said, well, let's just move in into my mom's house and because we were talking about taking care of her. And so it seemed like a, a difficulty, like this fire caused all of this difficulty. But yet during the time that it was happening, I had been practicing the mindfulness program that uh, Scott was talking about earlier. And I had really gotten to um, a very... Um, I guess a definite place where I, I felt like whatever's going to happen, I can trust the universe that even though these changes are coming, it's going to work out. And with that deeply rooted in my, in my mind, as I was going through these changes, I wasn't surprised and I wasn't upset. And I just took it all very, um, evenly and in a, in a sort of effortless fashion. And in the course of the next week or two, I basically shifted from living inside of a warehouse with no windows and no real contact with the world into living in a beautiful house with a yard and, and lots of windows. So um, that was a kind of shift that happened that I, I think um, wouldn't have happened um, as easily for me if I hadn't have had the right mindset on that. So um, that's a case where it really helped me to make that transition to have those tools of just observing what was going on and accepting what was going on and being grateful for what I did have. And, and those things really helped me get through. That's my story. Awesome. Appreciate you sharing, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. This spot, I'm having a difficult time trying to come up with when I would have been depressed. Because to be honest, it would be, you know, I'd have to look back to maybe childhood. Um, and I really don't remember a specific time. But what I would share is, I, I don't, at least for me personally, I don't look at the state of I'm depressed, I've almost always looked at it as I'm looking, I'm running a depression routine for me personally. So when I look at that, okay, so what's my state? What am I doing? Where's my focus? What's my physical, am I sitting straight, posture, looking up, focus, thinking? Um, and I'll remind my children of that if, if they I when I hear them say oh I'm depressed I'm like no you're you're running a depression routine is what I usually tell them because uh, as soon as they consciously realize usually that now I mean we don't we're, we're not running through a, a bipolar scenario I'm just running through a normal day-to-day -day for um, a college student and by changing their focus I can usually get them out of their state pretty quickly um, and when I say change their focus, it's, it's what they're focusing on, their breathing, their posture, their physical doing something. I, I almost equate it to years ago, my grandmother saying, well, if you're not happy, go clean the silverware kind of thing. Because just a change in focus and doing something different gets you out of whatever you were thinking about and gets you to a better place and you don't even realize you're doing it. So. Grandma might have been really, really smart, not, not knowing why, but <laughs> something worked. So that, that's what I would share for now. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing, Dave. And I, I love that. Uh, I love the fact that you do see it as a, as a routine, as a essentially a program that our mind is running as opposed to labeling it. Cause I just know in my experience, um, 
the more I embrace labels, the more those labels tend to magnify. And um, yeah, so I think in your case, uh, it's really empowering, especially like like your your kids, like you say, when they say they're depressed and it's like, okay, it's, in, it's making them aware of where their mind is at right now and, and what can they do to turn that around. So yeah, it's, and I'm truly happy for you that you have to go back that far in your life to think of a time when you were potentially feeling depressed, like you said, probably childhood. Cause yeah, I mean, you've, you've shared on our calls that all the different things you do and, and uh, yeah. And have done since a very young age. So yeah, truly happy for you that you're, you've had a lifetime with very, very little low feeling. Very good. I am grateful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm similar to David in, in the sense that um, I guess I would have to go back to my childhood too, um, particularly in high school. High school, like junior high was very, very difficult for me, um, very difficult time. Uh, and then, um, but I had friends and I was able to somehow come through it, I guess, in certain ways, I guess, um, you know, in certain points of time in, um, my first year in college, I went into uh, got into Buddhism very uh, strongly, and um, that really helped a lot. And then, um, then I guess a few years back, you know, I, when I was in uh, in the mid nineties, um, you know, I was living in in, uh, in a brownstone with my family, and then uh, my father in law was living with us too, and you know, everything collapsed whatever it was and I actually had to go file bankruptcy so that was a pretty tough time and um, I was, was able to work through that with my family you know um, and had to move into a, a friend's apartment so to speak and you know with the whole family or at least they rented they gave us an apartment to rent out from them and then um, and then back in uh, and, I, and I was and then I guess I, it was just trying to find myself and then the kids uh, we grow we were growing up Jewish, so it would be coming by mitzvah. So I went back to temple, which I haven't gone to in a long time, and um, and I started enjoying that, beginning new friends and, and, and things. And then I guess in the mid around twenty oh eight or nine, I started. Somebody handed me a book <laughs> uh, from uh, oh my goodness, uh, just went blank on his name. That's a terrible thing. Um, I, I speak to speak about him all the time. Uh, hmm, come on, David, you can help me because you know who it is. Uh, um, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, my goodness, that's well. He ha handed me the book, and um, and I was like, they said, "Oh, you would enjoy this." And I read the book. It was a Power of Intention, I think it was. It was from. Um, oh, oh, Wayne Dyer, maybe. Wayne Dyer. Thank you very much. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I just got into this whole, you know, I guess, mindfulness, self-awareness programming. And then I started running programs myself. I put together a program called Yes You, and we would do seminars, you know, uh, during the holiday times and for, for people and, we'd, you know, all over. And I would get guest speakers to come in and do some things. And um, then I started writing myself. And then uh, somehow um, I picked up, I guess, through that connection of people of these awareness books um and uh, jack canfield and a few others um and mary williamson and um you know all, and susan i guess susan jeffries was one of the first ones that i read because there's a little pamphlet and i was reading that stuff and then all of a sudden i just started getting into all this stuff and somehow i, get, I came across andy shaw's program and um it was the five i guess the first five chapters you can download free and I was able to download those, and it was like it completely changed everything. After I got through the fifth chapter, I was like, "Oh my goodness, I gotta get these books," because <laughs> I couldn't go without, you know, doing it anymore. And um, that was probably about four or five years ago. And uh, since then, you know, I've been reading him regularly, religiously. Uh, I also meditate religiously as well uh, every morning, and do my routine. And I think that has helped me. And as some of you know, in this group, when we met last year and just recently, I think the COVID thing is probably 
impacting me in a way that I wouldn't like it to be doing. I don't mean physically in terms of having being sick, but the whole issue of I work in, in, in economic development field and uh, I see the impact that it's having on all these businesses and it just really makes me uncomfortable. And I, so that, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the group to be able to talk these things out, but also for the books that we've been able to read and, and keep my mindset clear and recognizing the fact that, you know, it's up to me how I choose to feel, you know, and, uh, you know, like one of the Wayne Dyer books, you know, change the way you see things and the way you see things will change and uh, change the way you think and things that you think about will change. And um, I'm very comfortable with that. So I appreciate all of you. Thanks so much, Stuart. And yeah, I, I love what you shared and, you know, what, what you just shared, I didn't know about you. So thanks for being open to that. And, and yeah, as, as Stuart said, we've actually, Dave Karp has been hosting these calls every Saturday mornings pretty well since the course ended in January. So yeah, really grateful to Dave Karp for hosting these calls. And, and yeah, basically we get together with some other people um, once a week. And uh, yeah, it's really helped me as well to be able to talk honestly about the challenges during this unique time in history um, with this pandemic. And, and yeah, I, I know, uh, as Stuart said, and uh, I know for me personally, I've definitely had some challenging mental times in the last, you know, eight, nine months and grateful for, for this group to be able to, to get support. And uh, yeah, Wally, would, you're looking pretty relaxed there, guy. <laughs> so, um, would, would you like to share, uh, Wally? Uh, okay. Um, let's see, something. Well, from what everybody else was talking about, a, a, a story comes up for me that uh, back when I got married, uh, just 30 years ago, um, I actually, I was a caretaker for a cemetery, and I lived on the property. And it was kind of strange. But it was a there was a house a ranch uh, style house and you know it was the the cemetery part was in the back and I was up in the front with the office and the bathrooms and other things for the people coming to visit and um, uh, I, the the area that I was living on Eastern Long Island in New York it was just very quiet farm rural farm areas and there was no economy. And just being uh, newly married, I was I was the breadwinner of the family, and I had to support my wife and you know save money to buy a house. And this was a great opportunity uh, in order to be able to save because I basically did sweat equity for rent. I tra I, I worked to cut the grass and and you know every, whatever had to get done to stay there. And I think my rent was two hundred and fifty dollars a month for this big huge house. So I was like, it was a home run. It's like, wow, you know, it was a, it was a super blessing, but there was no, so, but so I was like, all right, great. I'm going to save all my money and everything. It's going to be great. And, um, I, there was no work out there. So I would have to drive where, you know, and then I was going back and forth and it was just really just making me upset. And, um, so I decided that it was, it was really starting to wear me down by right? going back and forth and just all kinds of having that pressure of, of trying to be a, a success out of school and stuff. So I decided that um, I was going to go back to school and we moved from the one end of Long Island all the way to the other end of Long Island, closer to uh, the, the big city in Manhattan. Uh, we, we ended up in the other town close by that. Um, and it was like, like Dave Carp said, it was like, it's like night and day, you know, it's like go from no people to everybody's like all around, you know? So I had re-enrolled in, in college to get my master's degree. And um, I, 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 within about, well, within two weeks, I had a job in Manhattan and a whole new setup uh, situation. I was making money and everything was great. The house that I was staying at was uh, part of a family. So I was renovating that house as part of the rent. So, cause I didn't have any money at the time and I, everything was all on student loans and credit cards and whatever little thing I could find um, and, and whatever, whatever accounting fees I was able to charge people. So I ended up working in, in Manhattan for several different places, going to school at night. So I had like a full-time day job and a full-time night job, which, which was school. 
and I, I graduated in, in two years and my life just completely turned around. And I, when I look back on it, which is, you know, it's 30 years ago already now, um, I see that everything happened for a reason um, that I was supposed to go from out east to, to there and that uh, wherever I go to see, to make myself feel happy is that the happiness comes from the inside part. And I've learned a lot from the bug free mind world um, that that's that you got to look inside. It's not, the help is not going to come from outside. It's going to come from inside. So, you know, so it's like um, I ended up getting divorced after that. And, uh, you know, it's like I haven't I, I've been, I'm working and successful and everything and with the children and stuff, paying all of the stuff uh, for them uh, as they grow up into young adults now and it's just like my life is just everything happened at a at a at a at a at a, at a certain stage and now with this uh lockdown stuff that's uh that's been around um it's like there's another chapter coming for everybody so it's like i'm, I'm looking forward to it my mindset is not on being depressed or sad or woe is me or looking back and saying oh man i should have done this or you know looking around I got it in, in my heart and I know in my mind it's straight that it's going to be uh, the next chapter is going to be so awesome. So that's what I share. Thank you. Love it. Appreciate that, Wally. Thank you. Um, hey, Scott. Yeah. Um, I wanted to sort of mention something about what you were talking about earlier, how, you know, we've been having um, these weekly meetings where we can discuss these kind of things, sort of like we're doing, but, you know, discuss mindfulness and and things and you know it might be a good thing for people to know that that they can start their own group it doesn't have to be in person it can be on on zoom and they can meet up with some people that you know are around in the same place around their issue as they are and have a a, a mastermind group every week and just having people to you know, see how they're doing and get ideas and bounce ideas off each other it can be really helpful. So that's all. I just sort of wanted to talk about how that that's something we've been doing and really benefiting from every week. And uh, it's, it's just amazing that the group is sustaining itself without any effort at all, that we all kind of have a like mindedness and we all feel like meeting every week. It's, it's good. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Dave. That's so true. Um... Yeah, like grateful we have our group. And as you say, people can create their own groups as well and whatever whatever friends or family or topics or what have you. And yeah, I mean, with the technology nowadays, anybody can do this and it's all available to anyone. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I guess in a few minutes we have left, uh, I'd love to hear from, from anyone, um, like in the instant right now, um, when you when you have a non-ideal thought enter your mind what do you do like when you when you you hear bad news or you you happen to hear something that happened to a friend or family member that's maybe not the best thing what i'm curious what do what do you do in the moment to when that happens? Um, I'll, I'll be brief and go first and others can go after me um i would just like look at it and observe it without having a lot of attachment to it and just try and see how it's a possible lesson and try and understand what the lesson is with just with the trust that everything that comes is a lesson um and then the other part is i'd try and just accept that that's the way it is and really just understand that you know, this is, don't question the reality of the situation because I don't like what the situation appears like. I need to just accept the reality of the situation. So that's, that's my little bit. So I was actually going to say something similar, but a little different. I mean, it, you don't have to label that situation as bad. You could actually label it as an opportunity. So it doesn't have to, I mean, depends on how you look at everything, right? I mean, the, an event happened, so something happened. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, you sit and look at it and then learn from it. And if you learn from it, it's probably good. So it doesn't, I mean, things happen all the time. You 
don't have to necessarily label them good, bad. They just are. And you kind of make a decision what you want to do. Like reframing it. it. Action. Or you don't have to take an action. Yeah. Um, you can just let it be. So I like that. And, and I mean, usually it's a, if something hits me quickly and kind of takes me out of a state, I usually ask myself almost immediately, and what's wrong now in this moment? And usually almost nothing is ever wrong now in this moment. So it's usually when you're focusing on something in the past or something a little bit in the future, then something isn't quite right. But if you're dealing with right now in this moment, you're either, you have a, if, you, if it's a problem, you don't have to call it a problem. It's an opportunity. You're dealing with it. So you're either dealing with it or you're letting it go because there's nothing you have to do right now. And that's pretty much all there is. At least for me personally, that's how I look at it. Yeah, I find that I have to get uh, uh, more data in order to be able to make a decision one way or the other. And with the right amount of searching for the information uh, from various locations and different things and putting the pieces together, uh, a lot of times the decisions get made by themselves and it's just a matter of uh, going following through with it. So that's what I, I take from that. Yeah, um, similar to what Dave had mentioned about um, observation, you know, um, it, I think also getting more in tune with your feelings and then recognizing the fact that those feelings are talking to you and that gives you the opportunity to observe your thoughts. And, uh, you know, and uh, one of the things that, you know, I found, I have found very helpful and still find helpful is, you know, I choose to feel good now. I choose to be happy now. And there are some times that, you know, where I'm <clears throat> feeling a little out of sorts. I just keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it to myself. And, um, eventually I feel better, you know? So um, I, I, I think that's something, I mean, I'm, you know, as I mentioned, I, I did some writings earlier in my, about 10 years ago, I just came across one. And I, one of the things I said is like, life is like tunnels uh, leading every which way, you know, uh, life is like tunnels of light leading in every each way. Or we travel switching from track to track and there are people who thrive on the switching and maintain the disorder. And as the universe is constantly expanding and growing, the tracks keep moving and changing. It's the order of the universe to keep changing and moving and um, uh, obtain peace within ourselves. And our mission is basically to jump on with the light and the path and the track and stay the course and to change and grow and connect with all the universal order. So that's what keeps me grounded. And, you know, staying with everybody here, you know, these, these weekly programs, uh, not programs, but these weekly chats, recognizing the fact that we can say whatever is on our mind and no judgment. And it really works out well. So. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Stuart. I, I agree. Um, yeah, obviously, this is a public call. So we're, we're all a little more reserved. I mean, I'm a pretty reserved person anyways. But, um, but yeah, basically being able to have that safe container which Dave Carp holds for us with these calls every week is, is amazing because it allows us to just be vulnerable, be, on, be honest, say what's on our minds, say what we're struggling with, say what's going well in our lives. And um, it also reminds us to, um, to keep in touch with the, the course material that we learned earlier this year. Um, you know, the title of this is Take Back Control of this talk and Take Back Control, that's the name of the course we all took um, in January, and it was basically about creating and sustaining change. So it was about creating and sustaining habits, essentially. Mm. And um, yeah, so I got to admit, I, even as I'm talking now, I'm realizing that there's things from that course that I could review again, and uh, make oh, sure okay. to implement in my life, because, you know, I've implemented quite a few of the things in the course, however, there's certainly some things that I learned that I haven't implemented, or don't consistently do. So um you yeah, may want to share, Scott. Um, I was going to say, you may want to share that it's Andy Shore and it's a, a bug free mind, you know. And yeah, thanks, Stuart. I was going to post a link below the video for anyone who's interested. Um, like I said, we all met through Andy Shaw's course. 
and uh, he's got incredible resources out there. And I, he, as, as uh, Wally mentioned, if you're at all interested, you can actually download the first five chapters of his book free to see if it fits for you or not. Um, yeah, so I just really like to thank all you guys for coming on this call live. I know we're normally on Dave Carp Zoom at this time, and uh, I, I kind of hijacked them to my Zoom for this. <laughs> but yeah, really grateful that we could all connect and that you're all comfortable sharing on here and sharing your personal stories from the past as well as now. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you on the call next week and uh, have a great rest of your day, each one of you. Okay. Okay. Great. Great week. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>